Hi, I'm your host, Marsha Florence for Just Dance, and we're here today at Cobo Hall for the seventh annual Living Without Limitations Expo and Job Fair. Come on in and join us.
Hi, we're here with Harvey from Great Lakes Center from Independent Living. Hi, Harvey. How are you doing? Okay. Now give us some information on Great Lakes Center for Independent Living. Well, we have four core services, which are independent living skills training, peer support training, um, information and referral, and advocacy. Now, from those four services, we have uh, employment, which branches off from those services. We have employment, education, housing, transportation, and independent living skills. Individually. Okay, I'm sorry. Now, this... this um mural here of Great Lakes Center for Independent Living is really, really nice. Uh, give us a good reason for why you're here today. Well, I guess we're here to just let people know that these services are available for them. Well, people with disabilities, all disabilities. Um, we want them to, to, to know that these services are here uh, for the general public and um, that they can come out and, and take full advantage of them. And we'd be uh, happy to welcome them. Okay, well, thanks a lot, Harvey. You're welcome. Hi, and I'm Marsha Florence from Just Ask, and we're here with Randell and Christopher of Cross Training Fitness Forum. Hi, Randell. How you doing? Hey, Chris. Hello, Marsha. How are you? Good to see you again, as usual. Now, we just recently did a show on Cross Training Fitness Forum, but we want the audience to hear a little bit more about it from yourself. So, uh, Randell, we want to start with you and your position at Cross Training Fitness Forum. Well, I'm what you call the adaptive fitness specialist over there, and I handle anyone with any type of special need over and above able-bodied people. Also able-bodied, of course, I don't discriminate at all. And I'm right, and currently I'm training trainers to also do people with the special needs. In other words, I'm getting overwhelmed, I'm getting too many people, so we need someone to handle the overflow. So currently I'm in the process of training trainers in a, in a phase of adaptive fitness also. That's wonderful. Now, Christopher, I, I think I believe that this is your brainchild idea of uh, cross training fitness form. So, tell us a little bit about cross training and how it come about. Well, sure, but collectively, it's our brainchild. And what we're trying to do, like I said, with the help of Randall, we're just trying to integrate able and disabled body into an integrated environment training side by side. And for me, I'm like the vice president of inspiration. I'm just trying to get people motivated, trying to get the exposure out to let people know that we're out there and actively seeking people with disabilities and getting them to train because. Physically perspective, the physical needs are obvious, but from a mental perspective, getting these kids and these people in this environment is so advantageous for all, all parties concerned. Okay, now do you plan to expand beyond the one facility that you have now? Yeah, we'd love to expand. What we're trying to do right now is we set the foundation on this one and being this is become a new enterprise because there's really nobody realistically in a metropolitan area that's doing what we're doing. And eventually, yeah, we'd love to take this on the road and open up several, several one in one in Detroit, one in Oakland County and as well in just trying to embellish on the idea. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, I, I must admit, this facility is really, really nice. We just did a featured show on Cross Training Fitness Forum. We look forward to coming out and seeing you both again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for taking the time. Thanks, Marcia. Hi, we're here with uh, Geneva from Dimer Chrysler, and she's going to give us some information on what services that persons with disabilities can receive from Dimer Chrysler. Hi, Geneva. Hello. Well, Daimler Chrysler offers um, reimbursement up to $1,000, um, depending on the type of adaptation you get, to help people um, who are disabled um, cover the cost of having adaptations to their Chrysler vehicles. And is it any particular type of vehicle, or is it a certain year type of vehicle? It's for 2000, 2001 vehicles, and um, as the 2002 models come out, the 2002s will also be included. Okay, now they can go to any Chrysler dealership and get this service or and request this particular? They can go to a Chrysler dealership, and a Chrysler dealership can um, let them know um, what types of adaptations are available. Um, the Chrysler dealership doesn't actually do the adaptation. It would be sent to um, a conversion company who would modify the vehicle for them. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, hi. We're here today with Tom from Doors A Corporation. Hey, Tom. Hi, how are you? Okay. Great. Now, Tom, this is unique. Tell us a little bit about Door Aid okay. Incorporated. All right. Our name is uh, Door Aid Corporation. We market and manufacture. It's a retrofit uh, automatic door opener that can be used uh, commercially, uh, can be used uh, residentially, open any type of doors, uh, bathroom doors, uh, laundry room doors, any type of door that's out there. Uh, we uh, are located in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and the product is we ship nationwide to different places. Okay. Now, what's this device right here? Okay, this device here, uh -huh. this one right here. Uh -huh. Okay, this here is a, uh, we can also pull a door open. In other words, we would put our roller bar in here and simply pull the door open. This is the roller arm 
that pushes the door open, that fits on the end of the shaft okay. of the motor, and it will simply push the door open, and this roller will ride on the door and push it to 90 degrees, okay? These are uh, the different type of accessories for the unit itself. Uh, simply uh, push the button that will activate the unit and open the door. <clears throat> That's run by a, a battery, 24 volt battery, or this can also be hard hardwired directly to the unit. These types of accessories we use mostly on commercial type doors. These two type of accessories here are used on uh, residential doors. They can put it on a key ring or just fit it on their wheelchair, simply push the button, door automatically opens. So when you say a door, it could be a bathroom door, a front door, a garage door, a patio door? It can be any kind of a door. Any door we can operate automatically with a push button. Okay, Tom, thanks okay. very much. We look forward to seeing you again. Great, thank, thank you. you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here with Vern from Mobility Monthly, and we're gonna ask Vern a couple of questions about Mobility Monthly. Hi, Vern. Hi, how are you? Okay. Now give us some information here on Mobility Monthly. This is a nice magazine. Matter of fact, I recognize some of the people on these pictures. We're a resource guide for the handicapped community. What we're trying to do is to provide as much information as we can about the uh, handi handicapped community, um, different services and products that are available for the community, and activities and ways for people to get around in today's society. Okay, now is this a, a subscription type publication? Actually, it's it's it, we we send it out for free, but we uh, also sell subscriptions so that we can make sure those go out first class mail and people get them a little bit sooner. Okay, well, thanks, Vern, and I'm sure that uh, we'll be featuring Mobility Monthly on our show real soon, ladies and gentlemen. For a business person, a professional who is in the office, somebody who's going out to social engagements, like as you can see, it's appropriately in the body. So it's lying comfortably on the hip lines instead of a jacket that would be made for someone who's standing most of the time. That jacket would be too long, it would be too bulky, it would bulk into the wheel. This is being beautifully modeled by Marvel. There's also a little bit more space in the shoulders to allow for the movement of the shoulders for someone who's wheeling themselves. Very good.
this looks odd as I do it. You could put them on. Mary Lou's got them wrapped to the front, I'm, or to the back. I'm going to wrap them to the front. Put the front part on first, and then you reach down. Get the other half. Pull it up. And wrap it to the front. So it looks like an overskirt from the front. From the back, it looks like trousers. Extremely quick to put on. Again, if you've got a leg brace, if you've got a prosthetic leg, where you need extra room in the trouser leg, this will accommodate that. It will hide it. You can wrap it to the front or sitting full time. You can wrap it to the back so the top piece drapes nicely toward the back. And you've got a nice, quick, formal evening outfit. And the rain has started to fall. This is a poncho um, made for people who use wheelchairs. As you can see, there are little windows in the side of the hood. So if you're sitting at the street corner and you need to look to see if there's traffic coming, I think we've got another poncho that can come out as well. Yeah, we've got two ponchos this afternoon. The little windows in the hood allow you to see when you're turning your head to look for traffic so you're not blindsided. We've got another sample of the poncho. Um, now actually the yellow poncho that we've got, that's actually mine. It's the same length at the back as it is at the front. You've got protection to the, right. to the wrists. It's big enough to put it. Um, it's big enough that you can put it over a heavy sweater or a light coat for to address the Detroit winters. We've got the other one. This one is actually cut shorter at the back because if you're sitting in a wheelchair all day, you don't need all that extra fabric underneath you. It's cut shorter at the back. So if you're, as you're transferring, as you're sitting in the chair, it's not going to get in your way. It's longer at the front to protect your lap fully. And then there's a little tie here that goes around behind your legs and snaps over here. And that holds it down. So if you're out in the middle of a gale and crossing the street, you're not going to have the wind come up and blow this up over your head especially for somebody that doesn't have a lot of torso mobility that would be able to pull that down so they can see. So this makes sure the legs are protected and it's also a safety feature to make sure that the poncho doesn't blow up. Thank you. Again, there are the, um, the windows in the hood. I think we've got a little bit more outdoor wear coming. Let's see what pops through the door. Michael is wearing two garments, actually. This is, we're getting back to sunny weather. The, the rain's gone away, and we're getting back to sunny weather for a change. Both of these, as with golf shirt that we saw earlier, both of the head apparel items that Michael's wearing are coated with solar weave. So the sheep's cap, which is the tan colored item, which just rests on the head, that will protect your neck and the back and the sides of your neck from the sun. And then the golf hat that comes from Cali Fame in California, they've got about five hats made out of solar weave fabric. And the solar weave will protect you from up to 97% of the UV rays. So it's not just that it's providing shade, it's actually protecting you from the sun without needing to put a chemical sunscreen onto your skin. So it's just a few other companies that are making things out of the solar weave fabric. Hardy 
is where the <coughs> is showing the last of our weather protection items. And this is a knee rug. The knee rug has a little pocket at the bottom that actually goes around the footrest on the wheelchair. It comes up, covers the lap, and then can just wrap loosely, the ties can just wrap loosely against the waist as you sit back in the chair. This way, if you wearing either one of the ponchos or if you have your own leather jacket, waterproof jacket, the jacket will cover you to just below the waistline. The knee rug will cover right down to your feet, protect your shoes. You can get that either just the water protection cover or you can get it lined with polar fleece. So again, in your Detroit winters, it will actually be providing you with some warmth as well as the rain protection. There's one other, one other rain garment. I'll maybe have Harvey hold this up. Don't run away, Harvey. Don't run away. have Harvey hold these up. These are rain chaps. For someone who's not able to rise up out of the chair unassisted, but they can do everything else okay, they, they don't need to have an assistant with them. And if they get caught in a squall, these pants have two features. Just the bum area is cut out so you can pull them on and pull them up keeping your front and your legs fully protected. They also have breakaway seams on the full inside seam to make it easier in certain situations to put them on and take them off without having to get up out of the chair. So just something else that can fold up really tight and small, stay with you all the time, that's quick and easy Quick and easy to put on to protect you from either a windy, blustery day or from rain or snowfall. Thank you. As I became a full-time wheelchair user, um, I'm like a weevil. I wobble, but I don't tip over. Everything is very bottom-heavy. Because I'm bottom-heavy, I have to have a lot more material in my clothing. Well, I don't want to look like a sack. So some of what Ruth and I have been working on is to try and preserve good looks at the same time allowing the additional material that I need. Another thing we found when looking at people who are full-time wheelchair users is that because we sit all the time, our pelvises tend to rock forward. And when they, they, they tip backward and rock forward. And when they do that, it pulls the back of our pants down and the front of our pants up. So if I stand up, I look like an explosion in a wrinkle factory right here in front. We want to avoid that. So what Ruth has designed is some clothing that allows the back to be cut higher and the excess material in the front for us full-time wheelchair users to be cut a lot shorter. It just makes us look better when we're sitting and we're out in public. We want to look our very best maybe for a business meeting or a conference. We don't want to look like we've got a bunch of material gathered up around our hips. So that's one of the projects that we work on. The other thing is to look at things that are already out there that don't require us to spend any additional money or any time to improve higher function. Um, Ruth likes to do, and I don't know if she's done that yet, spot the adaptation. Has she taken you on that little trip yet? Where you look at the clothing and try and figure out what the change is? Now, I have an adaptive shirt on today. Can you tell me what's adaptive about my shirt? Anybody? Any thoughts, ideas? It's not the way the shirt is cut. It's not Velcro. It's not breakaway. It's the fact that the shirt buttons oppositely to most men's shirts. And what this really is, I'll confess, is a large woman's Oxford shirt. But because I only have a thumb on my right hand and no fingers, and my left hand is a helping hand, it's extremely difficult for me to button a standard men's shirt that opens the other way. So by simply 
going and spending exactly the same amount of money for an Oxford shirt I'd spend for a men's shirt, I now have one that's adapted perfectly to my facility impairment. No additional charge and no modification at all. Sometimes it's a question of simply identifying what's out there that will work for you. Hi, my name's Diane Logan, and I'd like to introduce you to Chartier House. We're a brand new spinal cord injury home located in Washington Township, which is out 26 Mile Road in Mount, out by Stony Creek. We have the capability of servicing six spinal cord individuals in our home, and our home is all wheelchair accessible. Many of the rooms, or all of the rooms actually, have um, hospital beds in them. Uh, many of them have door walls that lead out to the balcony. It's a beautiful view, beautiful rural setting. Uh, we have an elevator that will take you downstairs to the exercise area and to the computer area that has internet access. Uh, we provide 24-hour care. We also provide meals, three meals a day. We also provide laundry service and cleaning services. And we would love for you to come out and see our facility. So again, I'd like to introduce you to the Chartier House, our spinal cord injury home. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you weren't able to come down today to the expo, don't worry about it. We got it all on tape. Uh, feel free to give us a call if you have any questions about any of the vendors that you see, as well as drop us a line about future shows that you may be interested in. As you all know, I'm your host, Marsha Florence for Just Ask. And as I always say, if you know someone with a disability, don't be afraid to ask, just ask. Thank you. Today, all around you, there are extraordinary people doing the most ordinary things. Spending time with their kids. Breaking a sweat at the gym. Finding something tasty to make for dinner. Living their lives. While they have to put more effort into it than most of us, and more time, and a larger amount of will, you won't find them asking for sympathy. You won't find them asking for praise. Only for the chance to get up and do it all again tomorrow.